Radio Free Santa Clarita presents The Talk of Santa Clarita A podcast about issues involving Santa Clarita and the surrounding valley Episode 148 Conservative radio host and pundit Joe Messina And now let's see what The Talk of Santa Clarita is Remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. Joe Messina, welcome to the Talk of Santa Clarita. Stephen Daniels, thanks for having me. This is uh, <laughs> what I think, how many, how many podcasts and shows have we done between our two shows? Uh, like four, I think? Yeah. Four, four, four something yeah, like that? Have. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to have you on for a couple of different reasons today. So I... I and and I've been, it's been in my head a lot. Like I got to talk to Joe about this. I got to talk to Joe Uh-oh. about this. And because um, you know, we you know you're other than the fact that you know you make money doing what you do. <laughs> I would say a we're the, at the opposite opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. about what we do in a certain sense. Would you agree? Or, I mean, yeah. on a certain level. And, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. Just, I would. It, mine's dog and pony show. Yours is a you know whole. Staff, no, yours is look. Okay, don't don't. I mean, I mean, we joke about it. I joke yeah. with you too. But you know, local podcasts, uh, shows like yours, help get the message from the community out. Now, whether it's one side or the other, or straight down the middle, yeah. mm-hmm. you're still getting a message out. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, you have just as many naysayers now as I had. So <laughs> you're about ready to hit the big time, buddy. When your own team comes after you, you're doing yeah, well. <laughs> well, it, uh, then I must be doing extremely well. Um, so I, I have it in four sections, what we're going to talk about, okay? Uh-oh, yeah. And uh, the first one is, I just want to talk to you overall about being a Republican. Okay. Because we, we talked about different levels. You know, the reason I did start doing this show and interviewing Republicans in particular is because I wanted to understand how they think. You know, because to me, um, like universal health care, Medicare for all, whatever. Uh, it seems to me, like you're a very religious person, a Christian and everything like that. It seems to me, as a Republican, as a Christian, Medicare for All should be something you would be supporting. Why not? Well, I think, first of all, Medicare for All, uh, you brought up the Christian part. So yeah, nowhere in yeah, the Bible, but, I mean, but nowhere in the Bible does Jesus tell us to compel the government to take care of everybody. He compels us to take care of everybody. He tells us to feed the widows. Mm-hmm. tells us to feed the, the orphans and take care of the poor. Now, when he said us... I mean, I grew up. I'm but little, isn't the government us? You no, see, it's, it's we, not the, us. We, 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 the not people. by any stretch of the imagination. Because you see, we the people in a whole different manner than a Republican sees we the people. Right? Two I, different I suppose, viewpoints. I suppose. I'm, that's no, what I'm trying to understand. Let's let's just go to basics. Okay, okay. I, I'll, I'll come back to what you asked me in a second. But let's go to basics. When a Democrat says we believe in comprehensive uh, immigration reform, mm-hmm. and a Republican uses the exact same words, do they mean the exact same thing? Not probably even, not. Not yeah, even close, not, no. okay? okay? So Republicans' viewpoint is, you know, all right, so we close the borders up, we make it so people have to fill in the forms, do the right thing to come into this country. Democrats will say, for the most part, I'm not going to put you in that corner, will say, uh-uh, don't need paperwork, let them come in, we're the land of opportunity, bring them on in, as Governor Newsom always says. Mm-hmm. So it's a two, two totally different dictionaries, if right. you would, that we use. So. So again, when you go back to taking care of everybody, yeah, I do believe we should make ways so people can yeah. get health care, people can get what they need. Yeah. When my grandmother came here from Italy um, and she moved from Albany to Boston, mm-hmm. Boston had health care centers all over the place. They right. were community centers. Right. They weren't uh, like you, we, what do we have here, the L.A. County Hospital, which is cold and, uh, you know, whatever. But, it, but isn't the role of government to take care of the people? No, never it has is been. Not. It is, you, it is to what protect is us. It is to protect us. It's to take care of the basic stuff. You know, you talk about the police and the fire and that kind of thing. But it's not, the role of the government is not to make sure that your every need is met. Because, you know, remember how this country started. We started with that light where everybody was almost like a big kibbutz, if you would. Mm-hmm. And everybody worked together. We now call it socialism. Didn't work out. People were starving. People were dying. And it changed. Okay. Um, that, that's a decent argument. I don't agree with it, but <laughs> but I think I think honestly I think that it it it, it is you kind of dissected exactly where the line is. Whereas right. I like when you talk about the government to protect us, yeah. why but, not protect but, us from bad health? But let's be 
Well, I can't protect you because you won't stop smoking. I can't protect you because you no, won't eat three cheeseburgers no, today. No, right. I can't protect you when you won't get off the couch. Why do, am I always responsible for everything you do wrong? And then you have that aha moment that you're sick now, and now it's on me. But that's, that's not wrong. the case for everybody, It Joe. is mostly the case. Now, based on what? Come on, give me a break. Most Look at when you look at the able-bodied people that can work and actually go out there and get a job that actually make a, a, make a difference in their right, community, right. right? Okay. What did we have for years? I mean, for for uh, for eight years, right? We had unemployment rates that were going up. We had businesses that were closing down. We had people that had no reason to work because all of a sudden it wasn't a twenty-two week unemployment; it was ninety-nine weeks, and you could apply for more if you needed it. Well, why go to work? I got a check coming in. I don't need to do that. Look. Humans are, uh, are creatures of habit, and they'll take the path of least resistance. When you go into that voting booth to vote, yeah. if you've got a ballot in your hand that will take, and, and you vote a certain way, and it takes that check out of your hand or it cuts it in half, right, right, okay. you're not going to vote for that. You'd be crazy to do that. You, you're a dad, yeah, you, right. If you're out of work for whatever reason, and you're getting money from the government, and the government's mm-hmm. taking care of you, and if you vote a certain way, man, you may lose those benefits. No, but, Why are you going to do that? But, Joe, you're under the assumption, though. How much, first of all, how much interaction have you had with somebody that's on, on unemployment? Many. Or on food stamps? Lots. And, so forth? and, and your experience is always that Lots. they are milking the, the system? I would tell you that probably a, a good portion of them are milking the system. They could be out working. They could be doing other things. Uh, see, but I worked as a food stamp caseworker. I worked at a homeless shelter for 12 years. I, I have never found that to be the case. I mean, well, okay, granted, I, there have been some, some instances of fraud and, and different things like that. But in, for the most part, I'd say 95% of the people I worked with and dealt with were people that were looking for an opportunity to work, couldn't find that opportunity, and were, were struggling to survive. You know, what is it the old saying about, uh, you know, pull you up by your bootstraps, but some people don't even have bootstraps. Well, you can't even, yeah, and you can't use that anymore because it's politically incorrect, but... Uh, uh, is it, Obama, <laughs> it is. It's the it Obama line. Well, I don't know who, who made it incorrect, yeah. but it's incorrect. Look, it, in, in, in my world, what I saw, and again, I, you and I have talked about this before, is I grew up in Boston. I grew up in the north end of Boston, which was probably uh, w- one, of the, one of the poorest places in the country in the right. late 60s, early 70s. And I saw people who didn't have enough money to make ends meet, and they were out there working. They were working several jobs, and they were they were making things happen. They came to this country for a better opportunity, so they they went out of their way. Matter of fact, it was almost a sin. It was embarrassing to have the, have the government help you out. Those people made it, and they made it out of there, as they did in many communities across mm-hmm. the country. Our government today has made it too easy to depend on the government. But but I want to go back to your original your original statement, which I think is a home run statement, but it's okay. never flushed out, okay? Okay. We have a we have a beautiful community here. Would you agree with that? Santa yeah, Cruz sure, Valley is sure, a sure. wonderful community. Sure. We have, what, 90 different uh, nonprofits that take care of certain parts of the sector. Sure. Why do we need the government? Why aren't we taking care of our own people? With our food pantries, and you know you're involved, and I'm involved with groups around the holidays that do gifts and food and everything else. Yeah. I don't need the government for that. We should be taking care of our own. We should be reaching out to our well, own. Well, there's still almost a thousand people that are homeless in Santa Clarita. Okay, and just but there are people in Santa Clarita that are homeless. Yeah. All right. So what what have we done about it as a community? I don't want to hear about the city council. Don't mention them. Why not? What have we done about it as a community? We have eighty churches in this town. Why aren't they offering homes and places for them to be? And when you say homeless, according to the to the state, mm-hmm. the tech, and I know this from the school board, mm-hmm. somebody is homeless when they don't live in their own home or apartment. So if you're living with grandma, right. or you're living with aunt or uncle, or if you're sleeping. So in how the many couch of those or... people? Yeah, how many of those people are actually sleeping in a van, a car, a, a driver? Well, the actual somewhere? count was around three hundred and fifty, but it, but but what they have discovered in most cases is when when you do a, uh, like a, a, a homeless yeah. count, it's usually about triple of what it actually. Right, so, and we're down from what we were five or six years ago. Honestly, right. I, I know that from the Hard but I mean, straight. it's not like it's Los Angeles. I'm, what I'm, my point being is, right. this is it's solvable here. A thousand people to, that, that need homes. It, so it, we got you got you got eighty be. churches. Okay, yeah. uh, you have churches that will reach out for pretty much. And I'm going to go. With, I'll pick on the churches because. Yeah. Well, I don't what really if somebody's care. an atheist? Right. What if somebody's an atheist? Well, he can read, he, that he or she can do it their way. I don't really care. I'm picking on the churches because when you have eighty houses of worship in a town of three hundred thousand, yeah, a thousand people is a number that's easily taken care of. If they're not stepping up, we have a problem. And the government doesn't need to step in and take care of that. The go- Look, at anytime the government steps in and takes care of something, you show me where a government has done something efficiently and cheaper in, in, in normal terms, not military or police, 
But in normal terms of feeding, uh, taking care of the homeless or feeding or, or taking care of people that need medical help, I, show I, me I, where it's been cheaper and more efficient. More efficient. Well, I would say SNAP has saved a lot of lives, food okay. stamps. Where, where has it been cheaper and more efficient? Where, where would you when say? It comes to, when it comes to medical. I know Steve Knight years ago uh, got poo-pooed. But uh, one of his original ideas for healthcare, which I thought was fantastic, mm -hmm. uh, he started with the vets, and then you could you could expand right, it from right, there. Right, which right. was you go to any I don't know Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, whatever whatever local area where you could get a mm -hmm. shot or get your medication. Right. Um, he was going to try to make that free to uh, to the vets, for instance, right. under there. Yeah. And he got a lot of pushback, which I don't know why. They mm -hmm. wanted the government more involved. Well, you could do it faster, cheaper, and easier. Through a Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, whatever, you know, local uh, establishment, if you would, than through the government. Remember, so, ACA was supposed to be affordable, right? I mean, it's supposed to be affordable for everybody. And, and do your homework. Premiums in most places have doubled and tripled. How is that affordable when they could barely afford their initial dollar amount? But there are people that have benefited from it. You acknowledge that, right? Oh, I do. I, I do acknowledge okay. that people have benefited from it who didn't have any insurance whatsoever, right. didn't know okay. where to go when you could walk up to a terminal well, in a I, library look, and get insurance. But, but I, as you and I have had this discussion before, I don't think that you can take one-sixth of the economy and make, make a uh, pass a bill and it's going to be perfect immediately. It needed to be refined and changed and, and, and grow with and, and corrected on certain levels. An example being the, uh, the payment that you had to make, the penalty if you didn't have insurance. It was cheaper to take the penalty than it was to get insurance. Right. Why not raise the penalty to where it's more an incentive to get so the insurance? So you want to, you want to, again, you want to punish people for not doing what you want no, them no, to no, do. No, 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 but and I'm called a fascist. No, no, no. <laughs> I haven't called you a fascist. No, no. I'm just saying it's it's funny. You want to force people. Look at. Let me tell it you something. Whether you want to hear it or not, yeah. I can get health insurance anywhere for any reason, whether I have a card or not. First yeah. of all, emergency rooms can't turn you down. That's mm -hmm. number one. Right. Okay. Number two, open up the phone book. There's clinics all over the place that'll take you for free. Samuel Dixon won't turn you down. There's all kinds of places you can get it. What you're stating is you're getting it to the point where you want to kind of walk somebody through like a third grader and say, well, here's your card, and you can go to these places, and no. there won't be any payment, or it'll be a small payment. No. But the Commerce Clause of the Constitution say, states very... They totally screwed that, but go well, ahead. But no, well, you could disagree with it, but it is uh, you know, in the Constitution that, that the, uh, the government can regulate commerce on a certain if it benefits the people itself. Insurance can, costs and, and uh, benefits were out of control. So the idea is that the penalty, which is really just a tax, as John Roberts said, um, and it's being challenged now, wound up in front of the Supreme Court again. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Trump says he's going to defend, uh, you know, pr protect us from uh, um, pre pre uh, preconditions or whatever. Well, and, I, I think there's know. a lot of Republicans that are on board with that, saying, "All right, precondition condition but, is just that." So yeah, but, we'll but he's out, he's filing in court to, you know, his people are, are trying to get it thrown out at the same time. So. Well, I don't know about that, but go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, all right. Um, See, I, I just, I don't get, I, I just, it doesn't, it doesn't, I, I, I guess what, I, I'm, what I'm getting at is it just doesn't strike me as Christian what, by being conservative. Well, I think that's interesting that you say that. Yeah. Because Jesus himself said, if you don't work, you don't eat. Okay? Yeah. So you, you shouldn't eat. Let's put it that way. But do you think um, Jesus he would also, leave, a, leave a homeless person out on the streets? Uh, actually, he did. When people didn't want to respond and didn't want to do, they stayed. Uh -huh. Okay, when they didn't want to get healed, when they didn't want to go to a certain area to be fed or done, right. they should But you're under the assumption that homeless people don't want to be I didn't say all. Okay. I never okay. said that. Right. You're telling me that every homeless person on the street is no, looking for help. No one chooses to be homeless. Okay. It's usually mental. That's mental not my illness. bingo. Okay? okay, but you can't say that. I, maybe you can because you're a Democrat. I can't <laughs> say that. If I talk about mental health issues, mm -hmm. they come unglued on me. All right, and I said, no, it is a mental health issue. Yeah. Talk to some of those people on the streets. See where they're at, why they're at, where they're at. Mm -hmm. They need some help. So, in, in, instead of just throwing money at them uh, or, or trying to find a place to put those little ig, cute little igloos that they, you know, what I'm talking about yeah, that yeah, they yeah, have, yeah. right? How about we get them, get them that mental health they need? We got empty buildings because, all over Joe, the place. Because Joe, the, 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 statistics have shown, particularly if you look at Salt Lake City, a very conservative area. Yeah. where they choose to, they have chosen to uh, house the homeless first and then address their mental issues. And, I wouldn't and house like them first. Well, okay, but it has proven to be cheaper, more effective, and ba better to, uh, as far as get, getting them aid than trying to get them uh, uh, to take care of their mental health issues or whatever before they have a place to stay. Right, okay. So, so but, but you can't, 
you can't do what government usually does, which is they set something up. Look, look what they're doing downtown. Did you read about the $600,000? Yeah, I, I okay. have a problem with that. All right. I, I, but that's not, a, that's not unusual. Don't make it sound like that's a one-off because it happens all over the place. Mm -hmm. My thought process is why not turn the bottom floor into uh, a, a medical care facility, if you would. Yeah. Okay. Put the residents on the second floor. They, with you staying here, part of that is you have to take treatment. You have to get treatment with being here. You have to want to help yourself. And that, that actually is what Salt Lake City does. Okay, so but but a lot of places aren't doing that. You know, Governor Newsom is talking about just turning over state buildings to them so that they can have a place to stay. Yeah. It's not going to help them. Instead of crapping in the street, they're going to crap in the hallway. What's the, I mean, give me a break. You, give them real solutions. Your perception of the homeless is... I've been downtown. Of, I've been in a lot of places. It's not. Your perception of homeless is in your clean little area. Let's go downtown together with your cameras. Let's talk to those people. Let's look at actually what's going on down there. Your perception is from 10 years ago from your little clean area. It's not what's actually <laughs> going on today. You, know, you talk about home. Are you telling me that a homeless person in Santa Clarita yeah. is, is the exact same thing as the one downtown sleeping no, on Fifth Street? No, it's not the same. It's not the same. No. And, and again, like I said, to your point, there should not be a thousand. With the way this community is... Yeah. Forget government. With the way this community is and the groups we have, and I'm going to tee off a couple of people, with the money that the chamber spends and VIA and all these other groups in town, right. we can't house and take care of 1,000 people. Well, apparently we can because they're not doing anything. Go, That's because, why no, government needs to get involved. people aren't doing no, Why? So it can cost because, three times because, as much and get less done? At least it gets done. It won't get done. Well, how do you know that? Because look, look at what happens everywhere when government gets involved in this kind of thing. Why? Why are they got involved in L.A.? You can sleep on the uh, on the front lawn of L.A. City City Hall. Government got involved. They did a great job, didn't they? When are they actually going to do something of substance to fix it? Well, nobody's doing anything anyway. I mean, but that's not a good reason, Stephen. You know what? These uh, and your pastors, if any pastors are listening, or some of you churchgoers are listening, All three you should listeners. be in your church. Susan Christopher, she works for a great organization yeah. that helps feed, uh, you know, feed the homeless or feed families in need. They should be screaming louder. The uh, Church Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints—they're yeah. doing a lot in the community. A lot that you probably don't know I, about. I no, I know they—they they all do a we lot of good things. We need to step My, it up. Okay, all right, but I not government as a Christian. Listen. Let me actually. Let me, I want to apologize for that. I, I don't. I don't mean. Okay. I'm not slamming on Christians. No, no, you're not. I, I, no, I just take it that way. It just to me that it seems strange to say I am a, a dedicated Christian, but I don't want to help people or uh, the government. To I help. want us to help people. I okay. don't want government. Jesus never tells you. you matter think, of fact, you he think, actually makes fun of government on a regular basis. Do you think the government is inherently bad? Do you think, I mean, the less. I government. think the inherent. I think the government is inherently out of control. Okay. I think the government. Uh, inherently, look at. I wish you had Ellen. Uh, uh, um, who's the one that runs for city council? I was just with him, Ellen Ferdman. Mm -hmm. I mean, he'll tell you about the waste that he sees. True or not, he'll tell you about the waste he sees. Why would we allow government to get more involved in that? When a church goes out and feeds a community, when there's a when there's a, a church or a synagogue or whatever, a, a, um, um, a mosque, when they go out and actually take care of the community, they do it more efficiently. They do it faster. They do it better. Well, All right. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, and then because we have to move on to the next topic. Okay. But but there's more. Oh, you know, there's more. There's tons, Joe. <laughs> I'm sure right? you got. I'm sure you yeah. Go ahead. Wait, wait till we get to my uh, kids question for you. Okay. Um, but the, the the thing is, I you know you talk about how government is inefficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Corporations, according to the Supreme Court, are people. Right? Yes, I agree with you there. Okay. Yeah. Do you think corporations are good people? I think corporations can be good people. Yeah, I but do. in general, when they're, I think their most, goal is to I maximize think most profits. Of them, well, because you have you have stock owners, right? You have, right. They have a they have a fiduciary responsibility to stock owners. So I think, for the most part, I think corporations try to be good citizens. I do. Um, I really? deal with a lot of them. I think there's a lot that deserve to have their hands slapped. They deserve to get in trouble. I mean, look at what Boeing just went through. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they. I don't want to say you should put them out of business because a lot of people work for Boeing, but they need to they need to be hurt by what they did and how they did it. Um, you know, we make fun of corporations all the time. We get on the on back of corporations. How much money? Have you gone down a list to see how much money corporations give uh, to to uh, nonprofits and good nonprofits, not not negative places? Do you, do you know the first company in this country to offer health care for free? No idea. It was Sears. Okay. Sears stepped up and, and started in their very f first major office. They started a, a health care clinic because they felt that if if their employees were healthy, they would work better. 
Right. Not because it, it was the best for humanity. The idea was, look, if they're, if they're healthy right. and they're happy, they're gonna, they'll be more productive. Yeah. Okay? Mm. But they offered it for free. So are you having a problem with why they offered it? No, they I offered, don't have a problem with that at all. I think right. it's great that they did. And there's many major corporations that think, do that kind of I, thing. I think that government in general is look, trying to look out for my best interest, efficient or not. Whereas, how can whereas you a corporation say, how can you is trying to maximize profits. But how can you say that? Because you have, you have today, especially in this country, is so polarized, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I no, see we'll a school board, a water board, a, a city council, what have you, that's, mm-hmm. that's mostly socialist, uh, uh, Democrats, and right. two Republicans, that government's not working for me. It's 180 degrees from what I believe to be truth and what needs to be done in a community. So you can't make a blanket statement that government does the best. You had the Obama government. I didn't government. say he did the best. I just said they're They have the best interest. But the best interest. You, had, you had the Obama administration who many Republicans felt like they didn't have the best interest of Americans in, at heart at all. And today you have the Trump administration where almost every Democrat on the planet feels that they don't have their best interest. So you can't make a generic statement that government has the best interest. You know, it, it, Gavin Newsom, to me, has got the best interests of Gavin Newsom in mind. He doesn't have the best interests of Californians in mind. He just stole five billion dollars from the transportation fund that he said he wouldn't do. So I'm sorry, I don't trust government. They okay. waste money and they don't care. All right. <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm technically I'm part of government, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, being on a school board, I just slapped myself and said I don't have the best interests of the kids in mind. Now, didn't I? Yes. Okay. But again, you look at my board. I'm not going to talk about anybody else's. Yeah. Our board is a conservative board. Yeah. Um, we look at things from a conservative viewpoint when it comes to finances and kids and everything else. Yet, we have wellness centers, mm-hmm. right? We have anti-bullying teams. We meet with security people on a regular. There's so many things that we do that you would, I'm sure, approve of if you sure, knew about. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming from a conservative board mm-hmm. and a governmental board, but we watch dollars big time because if we waste money. The kids lose. All right. Um, you're helping me understand a little bit better. I don't agree with any of it. <laughs> but well, I'm sure, understand. but at least you have a clue as to where we're coming from. And, and you know what? And I'll, I think that's I'll a big give, deal. I'll give you credit on something that, that you put something in perspective for me regarding Donald Trump that I had ne- was never able to understand. Uh-oh. Because you, you, had, you had said uh, before Trump was elected, you were not a Trump person, right? Mm-hmm. Right? And we did a show together where I asked you about how, how do you justify that? And you said you root for your home team. That made sense to me. You know, I mean, right. I, I, I get that. I, get, I, I, do, I do get that. That is that why you would pull behind Trump based on the fact that he's a Republican. He's putting conservative justices in, in, right. in, in place and stuff like that. And, you know, so, you know, most and, of his principles would line up or most of his processes would line the up. The injustifies the means, yeah. essentially. Yeah. How Machiavellian. No. No, well, you could say. I mean, if you think about it again, I know you hate when I do this to you, but you know, you could call out Trump on so many issues that I could call out Obama on the same. No, 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 we're not going to do that. Today. No, no. But my point is, you do it's that, all it, viewpoint. But no, you do that with everything, though. I mean, it, because it's true. If you but, accept, but, but see, if you accept behavior from one no, side, you can't. You do have that, to Joe. accept that same behavior. No, 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 no. no, no, no. So there's two sets of rules. No, no. You, you, you're, 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 you just you're, said it. But what, no, what you're saying, though, is like, oh, because this guy over here committed murder, it's okay for me to commit murder. But that's what you say. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I supported the Clinton impeachment. Okay? Okay. All right? So, I mean, I call him out on that. Yeah. I, I call him out on his behavior yeah. and everything else yeah. and, and, and yeah. everything. That was but a real, you, that was but, a but real guys, investigation, but, guys, but go ahead. Okay, but you guys are call, uh, won't call out uh, Trump on any of his stuff that he's done. What do you do? Well, for one thing, he's... I mean, the two well, impeachment items are not... Well, either one of them gets a lot, right, but go that's, ahead. That's next. That's next. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. You, you knew it was going to come oh, to you, that. Oh, you told... Yeah. But, but, I mean, the simplest one is Michael Cohen is in jail right now. His lawyer is in jail for campaign finance uh, violations. Okay. That person, number one, is named in the indictment. He's been identified as Donald Trump. The only reason he's not been indicted, they say, is because he's currently president of the United States. No, no, no. That's not true. Mueller, Mueller point blank said that, that there were no, in, there, there was nothing indictable. Okay, towards the about president. the Russia okay. thing, not not the campaign finance thing. As far as Cohen goes, this is what I think is really funny. So, and and again, you won't. It, it this is where you've put the wall up. I know that'll tinge you, but I'll put that up there anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I guess when something doesn't look right or doesn't sound right mm-hmm. or appears to be wrong and the guy's a Republican, he's guilty. He's got to go to jail. He's got to be indicted. But the other side gets a pass all the time. 
It's not right. It's dishonest. And that's why we can't come together. And I don't mean Stephen and Joe. I mean, that's why the parties can't find common ground a lot of times. Because it's a dishonest argument. It's just like with the impeachment, okay? I thought it was really interesting. Uh, and again, I'm going to use some of the talking points. Uh, we got to quick. We got to get this down. We got to impeach Trump. We got to get it done. Yeah. Got to get it done. Got to get. Oh, we're going on vacation. We'll catch you later. Wasn't that important? And don't give me this garbage. No, that, I, I, I agree. There was a, a certain kind of hypocrisy to that. The, the Senate has its own house and it deals with things its own way. And you can call them out if they do it wrong. Okay, but let the process take its take its place. Right. That's what they were asking for in the front end with the Democrats, were they not? Was Nancy Pelosi? Hey, we have a process here. You need to let us do our process. Yeah. It's the same thing with the Senate. Shut up, Nancy. Yeah, but, let the Senate have their but process. Joe, come on now. Mitch McConnell flat out said, "I am not going to be a partial, uh, impartial juror. I am working, coordinating with the White House." And you're, you have a problem with that, right? Yeah. So did you have a do you have a problem too with uh, let me see Cory Booker, Kamala Harris? I can go right down a whole list of people said he's guilty. I'm going to impeach. I'm going to vote to impeach. Before they even get the trial, that's okay though, right? But coordinating with the Wait, White that's House. A, that, oh, don't don't deflect. That's okay. They've already made up their mind. They don't even have to show up. They can write on a piece of paper, guilty, leave it on their desk, and never show up for hearing. They're already there. And when you say coordinating with the White House, what do you actually mean by that? Because well, I mean, you're not using Mitch's like, ex- explanation. Go ahead. Did well, you hear his what, explanation? What was his explanation? But how can you make a statement? Like you the, made without without using I saw what he the said after it, where he said flat out, "I am coordinating with the White House on this." Right? Do, are you going to bring attorneys? Do you want attorneys? What the kind of time frame are we looking but at? How much time do you need to get? He's also a juror in the. In the in okay, so he your your argument is he has a preconceived or he's already figured out what he's going to do. Correct? He's doing everything he can. To okay, get so should he recuse himself? Maybe. Ma'am, why not? Yeah. Okay, so should Harris? Booker, I mean, I can go down the whole list. All those people said already have said before they've heard anything in their hearing. No, no, they've no. said he's guilty. Should they recuse as well? No. no Why? No. They've preconceived. They no. come up with a. The difference is they said he should be. Im- what are you laughing at? I'm, I'm laughing because they've already said he's guilty. No, they said he should be impeached. No, no. They, I'm going to vote to impeach him. That means I've well, first, already decided. First off, let's clarify the rules here. Uh, the Senate doesn't impeach. The Senate, by the, the way. Senate does not impeach. No, no. F- f- they do vote the trial. Guilty. Excuse uh, me. Vote guilty. They, right. they actually said they're, they're going to vote guilty. I haven't seen where they've said they're going to vote guilty. I've uh, seen where they said they should. Then be you impeached. need to do your homework. They have said they're going to vote. They're going to. They're going to vote uh, guilty on. And okay, well, let's talk All about right. the impeachment. Okay, because I, I don't get. Why, why is it funny? I, I just, I just. It's funny because, again, if I try to bring up the fact that, so Pelosi started the impeachment mm-hmm. before there was an actual vote, which they had with both uh, Clinton and, uh, what's his name, Nixon, mm-hmm. okay? So she broke all the processes. That was she okay. It was all okay. She went, by all the, right. she went by the rules. No, she, made, well, she didn't go by the rules of the last two that they held. She went by the rules established by a Republican Congress. She didn't go by the rules of the last two they held. She went by the rules established by a Republican Congress before... And, and right, that, that you can start an impeachment again. process before voting on it. That was the rules established by the by the Republican Congress. There's no rule. There's no rule that requires it, a vote to do an inquiry. <laughs> they didn't call it an inquiry at first, Stephen. They were going full bore for for impeachment. It was an impeachment right, hearing. Stop okay, for a second. So make up your mind. What is it? Okay, let's let's talk about the actual charges. Inquisition. But go ahead. Inquisition. We'll yeah. call it an inquisition. That was well. Was you like. know, to quote the great Niels Gravilius, We learn from you after the Clinton thing, because you started with white water and all you could find was a dirty blue dress. So Stained blue dress, let's stained, be clear. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and you know, he wasn't impeached for the dress. He was impeached for all the stuff you're complaining about now. Well, then for why, lying to the FBI, for okay, lying so to Congress. So why, why aren't you uh, supporting the impeachment of Trump? Where did he lie to Congress? He that's, not what they're, that's not he what they're impeaching them on. Obstructing Congress. How did he obstruct Congress? By not allowing testimony. Oh, right. And Obama did that, and that was okay. All right, go ahead. Next. No, 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 no. Big. You difference. can't. How? What's the difference? Uh, Obama claimed executive privilege on certain things, but not so blocked. He had did, claimed but, executive no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Trump has claimed that they are exonerated from any testimony. They, uh, executive privilege covers everything. And no Not one, everything, ne- but Congress, close. Congress yeah. has never seen a situation, even under Nixon, to where uh, a president has shut out Congress from doing any oversight whatsoever. 
To, it, How did he shut up Congress from doing any oversight? Man, they called, he won't let, he won't they called let, a he lot of witnesses. He, they had a lot of paperwork. They had a lot of hearings. What did he actually shut them out from? Uh, subpo- they subpoenaed Don McGahn, and he would not let right. Don McGahn So testify. stop right there for that. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, and Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the Dems, her Dems behind her, have said the same thing. The problem with the president is that there's three equal branches of government, and he doesn't seem to get that. Yeah. Right? Right. So why didn't they go to the other branch of government, the judiciary, and force? They did. With Don McGahn, they did. And it took over eight months. Wow. And? And the impeachment charges are based on the fact that, that Trump was trying to influence the election, the 2020 election. If you went through uh, the judicial Wait a minute. Process. Go back to Don McCann, though. I mean, uh, so, so they wanted him to come forward. They gave him a subpoena. He ignored the subpoena, and they went to the judiciary. Mm-hmm. The, ju- did the judiciary for, for them forced him to, to, um, to give his testimony? They told him he had to, yes, but okay. he still hasn't. Right. Well, why would he have to now? They've already gone through with the impeachment. This is on a whole other tr- set of But they've charges. already gone through with it, and that's what, the, that's, that's what they're oh, basing no. stuff on when they, it comes they, to obstruction. They, they, yeah, I, they couldn't wait? That, not, not on these charges that they're talking about. Because, okay. you know. Right. You don't think you don't think okay. On the simplest, I, I just think I just think you can't scream from one end that he's not following the rules, following the laws, and doing whatever. All right, but and then you're not doing it. No, but I can say that th- that the charges on obstruction of Congress are the same things that Nixon tried to do, and that was one of the articles of impeachment against Nixon. He wasn't charged with obstruction of Congress. Yes, he was. Really? Yes. That was the charge. The actual charge was obstruction I, was, of Congress. He was not allowed to because, testify. Because, well, he, right, he was, trying to, he was trying for all intents and purposes. He was trying to use executive privilege to keep people from testifying. I mean, he was guilty of sin. Which is what Trump is doing, We too. all know it. Which, which is Trump was doing, too. He's trying to what? He's, he's trying to keep people from testifying. No, he, no, he wants a fair trial. I don't think he well, can Well, then why not one. let certain people come out and testify? Well, listen, I would, I, matter of fact, if you, I know you don't listen to the show, but what I was saying was, I have no problems with those people testifying as long as you, as long as you allow the others. Remember they that could. they weren't, they were not allowing the Republicans to bring people forward. And when they did, or when they said they that they to, would, and, and, ah, they don't have to. So, so let's not be fair about it and allow, you know, both sides to bring people to testify. Impeachment is basically a, a grand jury. It's a political. It's a political uh, process. Yes, it let's is. But it's basically a grand jury investigation to decide if the, the, to to indict a ham sandwich. Yeah, got it. It's the truth. A grand jury, you just, but, so you can't bring anybody right, in to fight step, back. You can't so, bring back, anybody step in. Step back for a moment. You want to point fingers and back and forth and things like that. No, it? I want to say to you that if, if it's if okay, Obama did if what it's okay Trump or did. not okay for one, it's not okay or it's okay for the other. Okay. If, that's if, Obama, if, if Obama had contacted Ukraine mm-hmm. and said, I want you to investigate Mitt Romney before the election, so I can uh, not, even, not even investigate it, <laughs> just, just announce it okay. on CNN, All would right. that be okay? If he if he said he wanted what now you want you're you're trying to equate that to Trump saying I want you to to, to check out the Bidens although it's really funny because on the left everybody says that's exactly what he said on the right everybody's saying that's not what he said you have a Ukrainian president who said no he didn't threaten us you got a Ukrainian AG that said no he didn't threaten us so I guess we're calling them liars that's okay that's that's good they are under extreme uh, oh they're under pressure I forgot that's right he pressured them into doing that. Look at you don't. Want you guys to, have been screaming what, for four no. years that you want to find out what went on in the 2016 election. Okay, the, the, Ukraine was one of the most corrupt countries on the planet. Mm-hmm. He's telling them to look into the corruption. And if the Bidens are involved, do you not agree that anybody, no matter what the not, last not names a are, word of mention about corruption. Yes, you did help and, and, us and out. Ukraine if you want to clean Bidens. up. Until Biden became a political no, opponent. not true, not true. They talked about really they, when they talked about the uh, uh, conversations around this back in la- last January, last February, about some of the you know cleaning up uh, Ukraine and some other countries, but mostly Ukraine because that president ran on on See, rooting out the Joe, corruption here, here's and cleaning what bothers things me. up. Is I I feel right now you're just rooting for your home team and you're not rooting for the Constitution. No, you can't you can't say that. I'll tell you why because I've gone after my home team. You guys don't do that. Show me one of your broadcasts, or, or one like yours, okay? okay, where somebody tore apart a Democrat and said they needed to step down. They're wrong. They're, they're working against the Constitution. You've been on the, the show right here. I have, said, I have said Clinton's impeachment was valid. 
I have said that Pelosi shouldn't have been holding the articles. Yeah, so, yes, so she right? does said that. Yes. So, all right. Okay. But I mean, you look at guys like Schiff. Now, Schiff, I think, should be brought up on treason charges. He's been saying since day one, I want you to think about something. He saw direct evidence that the president colluded with the Russians. If he has that and he's seen it and he doesn't bring it forth, you know what that is? It's treason. You have information that a president is colluding with another country to bring this country down or hurt this country. You don't bring that forward, I got a problem with that. That's number one. Number two. Dead nuts lying about the whistleblower. He coordinated with the whistleblower. He knew who the whistleblower was in his office work with the whistleblower. Doesn't matter. They've, had, they've had plenty of, Nothing. They've had plenty right? of testimony that to validate the What do you mean it whistle- doesn't matter? He did something wrong. But so he, he, gets, he gets the one. We're not talking okay. about shift. We're talking about the No, but my point, my point is we were talking about how one side gets away with it and one side doesn't. Okay? I, I how about some people think, do processes and the other side. I don't, I don't think what you're talking about with shift, whether it be true or not, is anywhere close to what Trump was doing. Because Trump was asking a foreign government to check into corruption so we that's, can clean that's up the 2016... You, you really believe that? You honestly... Well, I'm going by the words in the transcript is what I'm going by. <laughs> Help us find out what's going on. Biden himself said... That's not, he, first of all, it's not a transcript. It, it, you know okay. it's not a word-for-word transcript, okay. right? You know that, no, so the that, one the whistleblower had wasn't, but there is a word-for-word transcript that came out after it. Well, why did they seal it in a, in a, a secure server? You know why? why? Because nobody has leaked on a president like this. they've done to this president. I would, if I was him, I would have gone in and cleaned that place out. I would have got rid of everybody. All right? They hate him that much. Why I've never seen him? so much hate. Why do hate. they hate him, Joe? Well, come on. Give me a break. No, really? Really. I think me. because, it, and Republicans, a lot of Republicans that hate him at that level, too. I think he's actually going in there. He's showing truly what they're made of. He's showing truly how many fingers are involved in how many different, uh, uh, you know, sell, get, get, get yourself rich schemes, if you would. These people go in there with nothing. They come out multimillionaires. Right. You, you got Pelosi's, uh, Pelosi's son. Uh, what's the guy from Utah? What's his name? Uh, That's been debunked, Joe. Um, That's been debunked. What, did they have? They don't work for these guys? Who debunked it? Show me. Snopes. Huh? Oh, yeah. All right, okay. See, there's the problem. There's the problem right there. <laughs> They've you, been caught in lies, Stephen. So what, when are you... So what is it? They've even said that they're left-leaning. They've even said that they've had these It doesn't problems. matter if they're leaning left or right. It matters if it's the that's, truth that's or not. The there, truth. Is no, there, there is no evidence about this stuff about uh, okay. Pelosi or Kerry or anybody else. But their being son's being involved in any of this. Yes. Right? Hunter Biden's not involved in any of this, right? Is I he did, clean? I did, is he clean? I am going to say this much about uh, that it was probably not the smartest move in the world to take that job. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right, I like that. So, you okay. know, and, and I can see where it could look, but there's been no evidence. So, so, so when, when Joe Biden said he held that money up, okay, right. he told them they weren't getting anything until they fired that AG, okay, mm-hmm. was that wrong in any way? He had... Uh, I, just, it's real simple. Was it wrong? Did it appear to be wrong? Is it wrong? Ask the motivation behind it, Joe. Oh, okay. So now we have to read somebody's mind. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you are, because you already said that Trump, uh, Trump was he said, investigating him. Uh, but Trump said that, and, and, and so and, did Biden. And, and Biden, Biden, and Biden said, I want that AG gone. The AG was in, in, investigating because, his son and the company. Because Obama wanted him, wanted him gone. Several other nations well, so wanted Obama, him you're gone. So you're pulling Obama into this, right? But I thought a country was sovereign. They could do what they want to do. Well, not if you're going to give them money. Oh. They, Good, okay. I'm glad you said that. Okay, so what's your point? My point is, if we're going to give somebody money, you're going to give money to a corrupt uh, a country that's that's known for its corruption and going to continue to be corrupt. Yeah. Why wouldn't you say to somebody, "Look, we've got two billion dollars slated for you. You know you have a problem with corruption. What are you doing to clean it up? Which tell us what you're doing. I'm not releasing the money to you. Tell me what you're doing to clean you it know, up. As opposed to saying you got this guy that's investigating my son and you're not getting any money until you fire that guy. <laughs> First of all, they weren't investigating his son. Second, second of all, okay. you're still diverting. You're doing. It just astounds me, really, because I, I just it, to me it is so black and white that of Trump. Of course, would, because you're on that side. I'm not on that side. It's it's it, if it okay. was if it was a Democrat doing the same thing, I would have the same issue with it. Same absolute issue. All right, so so nobody nobody made Trump make that phone call. And let's let's let's. It was be, a congratulatory phone call to begin uh, with. Oh. You know what's in his mind. I forgot. Go ahead. You know what's in Biden's mind. Oh, no, Biden said it. I don't know what's in his mind. He said so did, it. So did, so did uh, uh, Trump. Okay. Uh, come on, Joe. You're, you're so, smarter than this. I, 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 see what I mean? See what you're doing? What? I think you're smarter than this. 
Yeah. But, when you sit there and talk about the stuff like, uh, again, go back to Obama said pallets of dollars, which he said. He said it. Get the clip. This is illegal. We have no way to do this when, on a country that we have sanctions with. We're not allowed to give them cash. Yet he did it. Not a word from your side. Not a word. And, 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 and the prisoners that, the, that the, the Iranians had, somehow they were stuck on the tarmac till the money made it there. But that's, oh, that's all coincidence. I'm just, I'm making it up as I go. You're distorting it. Of course I am, because I'm on the right and you're on the left. This is the problem that we're having. Well, okay, let's let's let. Th- th- that actually brings me to my next thing here. Okay. Because um, you sent me a text recently, because we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about uh, some other stuff here. That Did I call your names in a text? You won't really no, call you. No, it, it, okay, you, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna disclose the text. I, I hope this is okay with you. But uh, it essentially said, I don't consider you to be evil. Right. Considering you're on the other side, yeah. Do you consider the other side evil? No, no. And that's I've talked about this on the show a million times. Okay, I think that I think that the, the not rank and file, not the normal rank of because I have a lot of good Democrat friends that yeah. we get along. My parents are Democrats, so um, no, I don't think you're evil. I think that um, it, it's total. Be, you're being totally ideological to the party's, um, I don't even want to call them guidelines or foundation because it's changed so much, all right? But I think there's a big difference. I think when, when most Democrats think of Republicans, to your point when you started the conversation, yeah. we are evil people. We don't want to take care of the homeless. We don't want to take care of the sick. No, we I don't th- want to I don't think you're evil. Do I think there is a, a dichotomy in well, your philosophies. Your your leader of the Democrat Party has come out on several occasions and said, we do the work of God mm-hmm. and they don't. Mm-hmm. All right, so you know, you gotta think about that. You gotta think that all the way through as to what that means. I don't have to read into it, it's very obvious as to what it means. We're the evil ones, yeah. all right? So when you, when you look at it from that night, no, when I look at Democrats, or uh, uh, there are Democrats that are well-informed that I have great conversations with and we walk away not on the same page, but they're still good people, Okay. all right? There are some that, Yell that party line, right. and they're just ignorant. They're so sold out to their party. Well, I'm not doing believe that. Everything that's saying. Am I doing that? No, I think in some areas you do just like you think I do. Yeah. I think in some areas you you've been told, taught, or whatever a certain thing, and and that's what that's what the truth but is. But see, here's why I think you're. Well, I'm off. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was actually <laughs> the word I was about to say is worse. Is I think you, <laughs> and I backed off from saying that, but I think. You know better, but you stay. You, you toe yeah. the party line. Here's what you've missed over the years, and I think this is really funny about some of the newer Democrats that are moving in the area. Mm-hmm. I was one of the first guys to take on Buck McKeon. Mm-hmm. Go look at the archives of the Signal. I have taken on a lot of local Republicans and written pretty nasty stuff yeah. about them. Okay, so to say that I just do what the party tells me to do, no, I am I am persona non gratis in my party to a big degree because I call them out for the things that they All do. Right. When when they try to put in and. I'm sorry, but you guys are famous for doing this, all right? Yeah. When they try to put somebody in office locally, I'm the biggest loudmouth in the party. Because goes, that guy doesn't even know how to take a shower. And you want him on the waterboard? You're out of your mind. Yeah. I will not get behind somebody like that. I'm sorry, Stephen, but you guys don't do that. Anybody with a heartbeat is worth it. I just And I'll call him out. I just went back and forth with Jeff Martin, okay? Mm-hmm. And you know, I've, this is a big pet peeve of mine. Yeah. You don't show up before. Then your butt gets killed in the election. Yeah. You lose... And then you disappear. Mm -hmm. And then something comes up and you decide you're going to take a guy like me back on and go, why haven't you fixed? Well, where have you been? Right. Right? If you're in the education, you should be at the meetings, not necessarily the board meetings. You should be at the school PTAs and helping out and doing whatever. So that that infuriates, I mean, you can tell, that infuriates me Mm -hmm. that you think because you're a Democrat, you're better for the job. Or you think because you're a Republican. No, no, no. I don't think that for You think because you're a Republican, you're better for the job. I am a firm believer that blind faith in anything, to quote Bruce Springsteen, will get you killed. <laughs> and I always, and, and that's why my, my side right now is so mad at me, is because I, I am questioning authority. I am questioning you should. You know, who, uh, uh, who our chosen candidate is. I am questioning you know, wh- why that person is the chosen candidate and everything else. Yeah. You should, and and that should, it, it bothers me from both sides that there is a... I got some flack for, for uh, hosting a debate last week. You know that, right? <laughs> um, so we're dating this material. This is before the impeachment trial. I'm going to try and get it up as soon as possible. Yeah. But anyway, um, 
And the, the, the story that everybody was putting around was that the guy, J- Jank Ur- right. Urger, you're, yeah. you're in trouble saying his name, um, put it on. Right. Okay, he didn't. It was put on by the other three candidates. A total investment of $125 was put wow. to, to rent the stage. Big bucks, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the venue itself was donated. The sound system was donated. Right. How do I know that? I talked to each candidate ind- independently. I talked to each campaign manager independently. And right. I talked to the venue owner. And I verified all of this very carefully. Right. I told a supporter of the main candidate for Congress right now and told him that. I said, that's not true, what they're saying about this. And they said, well, where are your sources? I don't trust them. And it's like, but we're friends. <laughs> and I checked. And they don't want to listen because they, yeah. they, they, they just want to blindly follow their candidate. Yeah. And I feel, I feel, but I feel right now that the Republican Party is doing that with Trump. And that, it's like, I call it the cult of Trump. So, yeah, see, I don't agree with you. I think there's plenty yeah. of us... Look, I say it on my show all the time, all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I wish somebody would shut his phone off at night. When he goes to bed, yeah. swap it with a fake phone so he yeah. thinks he's texting and he, I'm uh, tweeting or whatever he does, oh, and it doesn't great. really tweet, right? Yeah. Um, I, think that, uh, I think that he should really surround himself with people he can actually trust in our part. I do believe, I don't believe that there's like a, that deep, dark state like some people talk yeah. about, but I do Good believe you. because cause you have it in your party too, and if you don't admit to it, then I'd say you're blind. You do have an establishment they Absolutely. like things a certain way. Absolutely. They like the way that current flows. They, they, and they, please don't, uh, yeah, the, right? The Bernie supporters that right. were against Hillary Clinton and said that it was and a great they, process, yeah. I, I said to them, what do you think? It, 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 you, can, you can sit there and, and talk about all the time about, you know, hey, it's a primary, it's supposed to be democracy. No, 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 no. Hillary was anointed a long time ago. Why do you think Biden didn't run? Because he was told it's Hillary's turn. I yeah. guarantee you No, it's, what, it's how it works on both yeah, sides, yeah, you know? Yeah. You get the nod, you get the wave or whatever, yeah. and it's your turn, and you know because you start getting endorsements and money and sure. everything else. Um, and so I hate that about politics. Yeah. And, you know, our founding fathers, George Washington was one of the guys who said, Parties, beware. yeah, beware the of the parties. And, yeah. and every one of them knew this because yeah. your allegiance, and as you see with the far left and the far, far right, right yeah. we have them on both sides, your allegiance becomes to the party and not what's good for America. Right. It's what's good for right. the party, and that's dangerous. We have a new section on the show here. Uh oh. Um, my kid asks a question. <laughs> but the question he had for you, Joe Messina. Uh oh. He's eight years old. His name's Ryan. And he said, um, Hello, Ryan. Why can't Republicans and Democrats be friends with each other? Well, they can. You and I are friends, I believe. Yeah, I think so. All right, I'm friends with people like Sue Solomon, Susan Christopher, and a whole bunch of others that are Democrat. And I know Susan Christopher's a. But recent. in general, Joe, I mean, you know, there are people that will not be friends with other people because of political parties. I don't, you know, it, frankly, it's a good question. I, I think we've got to the point. You, you and I just said this a minute yeah. ago. We give more credence to our party than we do to our country. Yeah. To being an American first, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I can be I can be friends with Democrats. I think the ones that have the thought process that you said earlier that the other side is evil. Yeah. Why would you be a friend with an evil person? Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's part of it. I mean, you think not you, but the yeah. generic you thinks because I don't want government paying fr- for everybody's keep health care. Keep your enemies close. Keep your enemies close. Uh, with your yeah, that's closer. right. But but. But um, when you talk about uh, you know healthcare, for instance, right? Right. right. If if two people are sitting in a room and and I say, look, I don't think the government should take care of everybody's healthcare. Yeah. That other person may right away. No, I'm evil. I don't care about people. Right. I don't want to be friends with that person. I don't. I don't think you're evil. I just don't understand you. That, right. <laughs> it's, That's it's, yeah. You know, um, who do you like in the congressional race right now? Uh, Mike Smith? Garcia. You like Mike Garcia? You're you're all I for do. him. I'm What's wrong with Mike Steve Garcia. Knight? I, I, or George Papadopoulos. I, <laughs> the popster? The popster, uh, Actually, yeah. I, I had Pop Knight and, uh, and um, um, Garcia on my show, and it was really funny because I said that... At the same time? Pa- no, no, no. I okay. had them on different nights. But Papadopoulos has, and, and this is my argument, you, and yeah. I know you feel the same way I do, couldn't find this place unless you give him no, a map I, first, I right? I think he even said he wasn't going to uh, move out here. No, and he kept telling me, he says, you, you, you're going to be excited. We're opening up our new office in Simi Valley. And I'm going, okay, first of all, I don't know what Simi is. <laughs> okay, that's number one. Number two is why would I be excited in Santa Clarita about a Simi Valley office, right? Right, right. So um, I think he's riding his name. I think he's got, you know, got a book he wants to sell, mm-hmm. uh, that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Steve had his chance. 
I think Steve overall is a nice guy. He's got a lot of good yeah, ideas. He's a nice guy. Friend of the but, show. Yeah, but but I don't think Steve fought for us the way I felt he should have fought what? for us. You know what? I think that's it, 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 in the last podcast I did with him, I thought it was interesting when I asked him, what are your biggest accomplishments that you're most proud of when you're in the four years? And I felt, at least when he spoke, not to slam anything that he did do, but it just didn't feel like there was a lot there. There's you know no what? fire behind the eyes. Yeah, exactly. No exactly. passion, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Mike Garcia has a, a fight, you know, ex-fighter pilot. Yeah. And I guess you're never an ex-fighter pilot, but you're a fighter pilot. Yeah. The reason he wants it, and let's get the R&D out of this for a second, right? The reason he wants to do this, he's not a politician. No. Okay? He doesn't like the way everybody's getting along. He doesn't like the, the, this bottleneck. I don't know anymore. about that, Joe. Well, he doesn't like the way people are getting well, along. No, he I doesn't know, like but, the but fact that we to, can't sit down and talk. To, you have to. Right? No, you know what? I'll give Mike credit. I like Mike. I, do, yeah. I really do like him. I, I don't agree with his politics. But we had a really good podcast and right. really good discussion good about guy. politics. He is a good guy. I'd have yeah. a beer with him. He's got a wife. Like he's got two kids. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's the he, average but, but American. Would you? Yeah, yeah. He's right? Yeah. Comes from an immigrant family mm-hmm. who came here and made good. Yeah. So, so he's got he's touched but his politics by all of are pretty that. extreme. Wouldn't you say? Well, for pretty, you they are. Well, I mean, they wouldn't be for pretty, me. Uh, they're pretty far on the right. He, he's anything. He's not. No, I mean he's. And not Christy a, Smiths aren't. Come on, uh, honestly. Chris, Christy would argue that she's a moderate, and, well, and most people would say she's a moderate. Well, most people, I, I don't think well, Mike Garcia is a moderate in any way. No, Mike probably leads a heck of a lot more right than Steve does. Okay, mm-hmm. but he's yeah. not a right wing extremist. I, I'm, I wouldn't give him that by any stretch. Yeah. Okay. Um, where Christy and I, uh, again, I told you, and I'd say this if she was sitting in the room, and mm-hmm. but I, I had a good time with Christy when she was in education. We agreed yeah. on a lot of things. We worked, we worked towards certain things together. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, the minute you make that jump to the state, all of a sudden you become a total, uh, a total hack to that party. Mm-hmm. And when I think of all the decisions that she's made at the 38th level, and, right. and I don't want to turn this into a... I don't want to turn this into a podcast against Christy, but there's a lot of votes that she made that I would have majorly accepted. Well, of course you would. She, and she, and she, taking parental choice away from, from parents for just for education, dead wrong, totally wrong. There are not, other ways. Well, to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you can listen to the podcast with Christy. Yeah. She talks about that. Right, well, I sat with her and talked about that. Yeah. And I explained to her some of the areas that was going to cause problems in. And guess what's happening? Yeah. It's causing problems in those areas. Yeah. Our legislature never goes back and looks at anything. I think there should be a five-year, what do you think of this? There should be a five-year sunset law that, that any law you put into effect has to meet certain goals and criteria within five years or you have to start all over again. Well, I don't know if I'd say five years for everything, but that's I, not a bad but idea. For the, for, but you know what? While we're throwing out ideas, one of the big controversies about the Senate right now is that McConnell won't put bills to the floor. Mm-hmm. I think, and should no, be, neither party will agree to this, but I think there should be a law that requires if one house passes a bill, that it has to be put to a vote of the other house. Well, I, I don't disagree with that, but what yeah. I would change. Yeah. The bills have to be clean. And when I say clean... No pork. Okay, thank you. I mean, if, if, it's, a, if it's a healthy child food uh, act, mm-hmm. there shouldn't be money in there for a bridge. Well, I, don't, uh, you I know, think that's a whole other away. conversation. No, but my point is, if yeah. you want them brought and voted on clean, then make them clean. Well, I just, I just want them voted on. I just I think if it yeah. passes a house, it should, it, it, McConnell shouldn't be able to have enough power, so much power that he can't. That he, but that this he, is where you get mad at me, and I say Reed did the same thing. It's, it's been going he, on. Forever. I know he did. I know been he did. Going on forever. And I, I know, know he did, and that's it. why I'm saying that both parties need to acknowledge the fact that if the party's in control, but if a bill passes up at one yeah. con, one house, it should be put forth for a vote on the at the other house. Mm-hmm. Period. Regardless of party affiliation or anything, but see, I don't think Pelosi I, or McConnell would would bow. None of them would. None of them would. Yeah. because you you're that taking their power away. They're, that is a problem. Uh, okay, we agree. There, oh yeah. See. Okay. All right. We, hey, hey. Look at this. Are a lot of stuff that you'd be surprised that we probably would agree on. We may not agree about doing it exactly the same way, but yeah. that's where we have to stop and go. Okay, you want to make sure everybody has. All right, you want to make sure everybody has health care. I'm. I'm. I don't want the government paying for it, but I'd like to make sure that everybody had health care available to sure. them. So how do we get on the same, not here now, but obviously there's something we could sit in a room and start to hammer out right. okay. ways to make it happen. But they don't do that. They go, no, you want this. Yeah. No, you want but that. See, well, then, but that's both sides. And, and, and that's it's what I'm problem. saying. Yeah. And, I, and I, I've gotten a lot of flack, particularly on the, the Jank interview I just recently did, because I said that you have to go in there and accept the fact that you're not going to get everything you want. Period. Right. If you're going to get anything done, well, he doesn't feel that way. No, I know he doesn't. He, he thinks you can fight all the way through. And right. Stuff. And and I've had fights with my hardcore right friends mm-hmm. who hear the word compromise and they mm-hmm. throw up and they go, no, 
No, you know, my dad was always funny about this stuff, and, and he taught me real early. He said, what do you want for that job? I said, 200 bucks. He go, ask for 350 Mm-hmm. And and negotiate it right, down, right, right? Right, right, Take some things out of the list to go, right. okay, all right, I'll come down, but you got to take away this. Sure. And then everybody walks away happy. We don't do that. We go, this is what we want. Right. You won't go here? We go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. works out well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, nothing <laughs> You know? All right, we're going to move on to the final thing we're going to talk about. And I'm hoping you don't walk out on me. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I may spit at you, but I won't. Well, we'll see. Yeah, okay. Anyway, go ahead. Let's talk about Katie Hill. Okay. Um, I'm going to defend you for a little bit here. Okay. Because I was contacted about, I didn't know what it was that was out there about Katie, but I was contacted beforehand because my name had come up in, in some of the texts about her. Right. And I contacted you. Right. You knew nothing about this stuff initially. So it was going around, I know that for a fact, before you knew about it. Right. Let's, I just want to make sure we're clear so nobody nails either one of no, us. No, on no, no. What I'm okay? saying is, I didn't know what it was or anything of what was going on or anything like that. I, I contacted you because I, to ask you if you knew anything about it, about like texts or uh, my name was coming right. up and everything like that. And you, you had not heard anything about any of this stuff about Katie at the time. So it was floating around some of the GOP operatives in this valley before it got to you, correct? Would you agree with that? I, I, I wouldn't just dic- I wouldn't limit it to GOP operations. Well, oh, well, it was floating all wrong, around the wrong, place. Okay, okay. wrong, cho- right. poor choice of words. But but let's let's Republican loyal. Let's just be, and then Steve will probably throw something at me when he sees me for saying this. But the year that Steve she ran against Steve, or yeah. Steve ran against her, or whatever, however you want to put it, we had information on her. A lot of this stuff, you know, uh, people said, "Who's Katie Hill?" I mean, come on, she came out of nowhere for all intents and purposes, yeah. right? Who's this kid? Oh, she was that girl. She went to Saga's high school and this, and people were, were talking. Right. All right? And you know if you're in this business, people send you all kinds of crap. You just blow it aside, and you go, well, yeah, whatever. Okay. And so you kind of heard about things that are happening. Right. Steve's office and others had, had heard and got information about what she was doing mm-hmm. um, at the places that she worked. They decided not to do anything with it. Nothing could be really be substantiated, and that's the stupid thing to do in a in an election is to start throwing stuff out that you can't substantiate. Right, right, for, right, right. So to your point, I don't want to make it sound like the first time I ever heard anything about Katie Hill was that August. No, or I'm whatever. talking about that specific. But that specific thing. stuff. Yeah. Um, people have been dropping dropping stuff off and talking about, but I again I gave it no credence. I didn't know anything right. about it because. But you had seen the pictures and stuff like that, right? I had seen the pictures. I don't. I can't tell you what I actually, you know. Again, for journalistic reasons, I don't know if I saw them when you and I talked, or just before, or just after. I don't right. know exactly when they came to me, and I actually looked at them. We'll put it that way. Well, I yeah. had heard. Okay, I, but I here's didn't. what I want to try and understand. Yeah, it, go ahead. Okay, you knew obviously that these were private photos. Okay, and and you told that Playboy reporter. That you turned him over to the GOP? No, he lied. He lied. He, he lied. Okay, so what happened? What did you right, do? I never told him I turned him over to the GOP. So let's let's what did let's, you do with let's him? clear that up right okay, away. Well, okay, I'm giving you that opportunity. So you, I, I hope you're not a Pollyanna about this because you know the Dems and the Republicans both operate the same. I don't way, care right? what she does in a private life. No, no, I, and 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 I don't to a degree. First of all, let's talk about what started the whole thing rolling. Okay. Okay. I am tired of hearing about how. You know, Trump is grabbing this and talking about doing this and sleeping and all this other crap right. going down. And you're calling him Hitler. And here you are doing some of the same things, okay? And so. Some of the same things. Look at I cannot. Some of the same things. She is uh, taking advantage of some of the people that she's either sleeping with or married to or sort of married to or whatever, all right? So don't talk about it when you saw the text message too. So I hope you don't walk out on me where her. I don't know what to call the woman in the trouble, or wife, uh, or trouble friend. Okay, friend, uh, let's uh, whatever. Friend. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not being funny here. I'm serious. I don't know what to call her. Mm-hmm. So, um, her trouble friend. Okay, and her trouble friend writes in one of the text messages, "I'm afraid of you." Okay, I see how you treat Kenny. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my friend. Mm-hmm. All right. So when you see that, and here you are, you're part of the Me Too movement. You're talking about trouble. Don't do it. No. But now, I'm sorry. You asked me what I thought. Right. I'm telling you what I thought. Okay. okay? All right. So then I decide to write a piece that says, mm-hmm. this is the life, this is, I didn't even say this is the lifestyle she's living. Read the piece. Mm-hmm. I said, this is where she's breaking the law. And she's got the 
guts to call him out wasn't for breaking, breaking the law. law okay? it, was, it was probably it was, it was not appropriate, but it wasn't no, no, she the law. voted on not sleeping, no, no, or no. not having relations no, with Joe. Him, right? Now wait a minute. Let's clarify. You're getting Go you're getting things. See, you did this things. on your on your GoFundMe page. You you distorted the truth. No, I didn't. Yes, not you at did. All. Yes, you did. Let's be clear. The relationship that the pictures were about was with a campaign I staffer. Didn't, I didn't talk about okay. the picture. She admitted to having a relationship. That's what I'm talking with about. With a campaign staffer, not a congressional staffer. She has always denied that, and there, it was never went under review with the Ethics Committee, so there's not, it's completely unfounded. And the only, the only thing that they have, which, by the way, Jennifer Von Lahr, who published the article, I have on my podcast saying, hey, you can't trust text messages. They can be altered. And her only verification is from an ex. Wait a minute. She said that, yet yet she was trying to hold Dante accountable for the text messages that he sent. That doesn't make any sense. No. She, Which one of you was drinking? No, no, no. Let me let me clarify. <laughs> I asked her on my podcast about the Dante Acosta uh, text right. messages that he right. put up, and she says text messages can be altered. Now, anything. Her, can be the altered. only information. Right. The only information that she had to verify this this relationship in the with the congressional staffer right. was happening was from an angry ex-husband or spouse or whatever um, it, that was saying that, you know, that they were having an affair. Yeah. That was it. Just one thing. And even then, she, and, and, Jennifer's and, on, on tape saying and another affair, and, and, is, and they alluded to another affair that she was having. Or See, this is, we can get into the weeds with right. this, right? We right. go back and forth because you know, we're, we're so well-versed in this area, I'm sure we can come up with a conclusion. <laughs> but you asked me, so the point is, uh, so here's the point. So I write about that, and I write how I feel about what, what's going on with that, okay? Right. Would you at least give the fact... I never published any of the pictures, okay? Right. Because they, to me, right, you would frankly, be getting, even being a Christian, I'm sitting here and going, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Right. All right? And I even said it to you. All you're going to do by publishing these pictures is make her a victim. Right. That's what you're going to do. You're going to play that out to know I would. That's what I would do if I right. was her, all right? So you get the pictures, and, and, and as far as the RNCC goes, I talk to them all the time. Right, and right. when you're in you this area, about the pictures? you're working uh, about. The, I said, look, there are pictures floating around about her. All right, and the bottom line was, are you guys? Do you have them? Are you doing anything with this story? Because you, you know, again, both sides when they find they stuff like this, they run. Uh, they, they said they, have they the didn't pictures? have pictures. They heard that 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 she was in some kind of r- weird relationship, but they weren't going to do anything. Okay, they weren't writing about it. They weren't posting it. They weren't doing anything with it. Did you that re- was the extent of the conversation. When you received the pictures, did you receive them as attachments, or they, or would you send a link? What were you sent? Uh, I got them several different ways. Okay, were you sent a link? All right, were you um, sent a link? No, no. I Everybody was sent, sent you sent you attachments. I got. I actually got a zip file, and I got some pictures at my mailbox. And you're actually. And actually, I get. Or? Yeah, I don't. Not my house mailbox. I have a. I have one right, of those postal okay. things. So you never see any kind of Google Drive or anything like that. No, I actually did see a Google Drive, but Google I, Drive. but nobody sent me the Google Drive. If you, however, that comes about when you have a Google, um, when you have a Google Drive yourself, right? right there right. are ways to go searching for things on a regular basis, right? Okay, but but again, I if you're not. You've got to be getting stuff too on a regular basis, and not just on Hill. No, pretty much on everybody. You, you over 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 uh, estimate the importance <laughs> of the show. Uh, Whatever. The, 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 the worst thing I got was the fact that uh, the dog catcher likes cats. No, I you listen. Um, people people send me stuff on, uh, and you know the players, you know Barlavi, Olson, yeah. Bresnik, and all of them, right? And it's like, what, what do you want me to do with this? Seriously, what do you want me to do with this stuff? Well, why didn't you turn it into the police? It's not a crime. Revenge porn. Let's, let's go down. I'll tell you what. Let's leave here. Put your cameras on. Let's walk down the sheriff's department. It's not revenge porn. There's no sexual activity in it. Absolutely none. Okay. And I love you guys that do this. Where's your law degree? You I don't, don't have that. one. Okay. I know you're dealing with. You know. You talk about being honest and transparent. We're both having to deal with that law firm in New York on the revenge porn thing. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I've got. I'm not, be, I'm not, I'm not, you've not been given a, a preservation of evidence, any kind, not, nothing not from the New York firm. No. Okay, but, but all right, but anyhow, yeah. so I got it from them, uh, and I looked them up, and I checked them, and I have some decent attorneys. Okay, and both of them said the same thing: let them come after you. We can have a field day with this. It is not revenge porn, not by the California standard, not by the federal standard. All right, so but what I, did I get? That was what did I get as a journalist, as a commentator? What did I get? That I should have immediately run down to the sheriff's station, and if you did, they would look at them and go, eh, "We can't do anything with this. Let's go down there." Well, you why did you, why did you even tell the RNCC about it? I mean, 
to, to see if they were doing if they had it and they were doing anything with it. Why not? If if you're going to run with this stuff, my my voice to them would have been, do not print those pictures, because again, I already said it. You've known me for a few years now, more of yeah. a strategist than I am a reactionary. Okay, right, right. whether you agree with her or not, or like her or not, yeah, you will give her an out. Do not print these pictures if you have them. Don't post them. Don't print them. Don't even talk about the trouble relationship. It's it's a waste of time. But do you think she's a victim now? No, I don't. You don't? Not at all. Why is she a victim? She had pictures of herself posted without her authorization. Mm-hmm. Pointing out, you know, her relationships, her private, intimate relationships. Okay. Without her, without her authorization. And is the husband a victim at all? Is the girl, that other girl, I don't know her name. And I'm not being flippant. I really don't know her name. Yeah. Is the other girl a, a, a victim? Uh, is Graham a victim? Is uh, anybody who was involved in her office who knew what was going on and had to keep their mouth shut, they victims? Or is it just Katie Hill? Well, again, that there has been no conclusive evidence about the relationship. Right. Yeah, she resigned because she wasn't guilty. I got it. <sighs> Joe. <laughs> It's just, you know. Let me tell you what, buddy. You don't want to hear it. I've talked about it on my show, so I don't have any problem talking about it here. Okay. Okay? When you do, when you're at the level that I'm at, I'm not a big guy by any stretch. I don't want to come off that way. No, I'm taller than you. But I have, yes. (laughs) Uh, Not if I lay down. I'm taller than you. Anyway. um, So uh, we have friends in D.C. We have friends that, you know, they move a lot through there, especially the staff. You know that. Um, uh, And I know that, that when things started to come down, uh, one of the staff members at Katie Hill's office told a staff, they had told a staff member, said, look, whatever you do, don't lie. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't lie because you will go to jail. She'll just get booted out. Okay. But mm-hmm. you guys could go to jail or you won't work in the city anymore. Mm-hmm. That was bit the base of conversation. All right. I want you to think about something. They go into the ethics committee. They go into the, the hearing. They're in the hearing two and a half hours. The hearing goes on pause. And then they say, you know, she's resigning. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, I've been told what took place, but none of your people are going to believe it, so it's a waste of breath to even say it. But the bottom line was she was, she was caught lying to Pelosi. She was caught doing something wrong. If she had told him, let me tell you what, being in politics as long as I had, if she had told him the truth from the day one, exactly what went down and how it went down, Pelosi would have spun it and got her out of this. Mm-hmm. But because you lied to her, you're done. Right. She can't deal with it. So There's your no way to get your out allegation of it. is that, that, that she lied to Pelosi about yeah. the relationship. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm. They can deal with a lot of stuff. They can't deal with it once it's out there and rolling. They don't want to deal. Look, Pelosi had her playful too. How much stuff do you want to deal with? Yeah. So. And and frankly, if you look at it from my point of view, yeah, it's the worst timing possible. I would have rather Hill had to resign. After all the papers were pulled, not before, right? I mean, because it would have closed that window and you would only had a Republican or a couple of Republicans and maybe some soft Democrats running. We would have had a much better chance of taking that seat. Will you acknowledge, though, that it was at least a Republican hit job on a certain level? No. Well, no, no. I will acknowledge that there are people that may have been registered Republicans. There's no Republican organization that said, no, no, no. we have but, to get but, this but out there, and but nail there, her. But there were Republicans that were... Basically, trying to nail her on some. Oh, I no question about it. There are Republicans all over the place that are trying to nail her and other Democrats for doing stuff wrong. I mean, it wasn't like somebody sat down in an office in July and said, "Hey, or June or whatever," and said, "Hey, we hear there's stuff out there about Hill. Let's Hill. Let's go. Let's go looking for it. Let's dig it up and let's nail her." That was not the conversation at all ever that I know of. I mean, don't don't make it sound like it was a backroom. Uh, it was a backroom deal. It wasn't any different than any group, I don't care, Democrat or Republican, finding out that the opposition had something wrong and trying to exploit it. I miss the days when people would win on having better ideas, not slamming people <laughs> on uh, personal lives. I, look, I don't disagree with you. You know, I mean, that, that, that's the way America's supposed to be. The, the, the guy or the girl with the best ideas is the one that wins. You can use person. I understand that's politically correct. Well, you can say the person with the best idea. I, I, I'll probably, <laughs> probably get hit for saying girl. Um, yeah, you will. Yeah, so. um, no, but, but, but I agree with you. I think, I think the problem here is that we've allowed that, that hate and, and that nastiness. Well, how can we get out of it, though? How can we stop it from happening? You know, it's funny. I, I, I just talked to Sue Solomon about this a couple of weeks back, and I said we should actually put together for educate. I don't care about the rest of it. 
for education only, we should put a panel of three Dems, three Republicans that get along. Yeah. And it's not an official panel. It's just that we're in education. We see what happens on a daily basis. And let's make sure that we get the message out to our respective parties that we're working together. We're working together for your kids. And here's what we're doing. It's making our schools better and stronger. And not because we're Democrats or Republicans, but because we're all working together for education. Yeah. That, I think, would tamp down some of the rhetoric, the political rhetoric at the education level. Yeah. But I don't know how to do it on a bigger level. All right, Joe. Let's uh, let's do some fun things real fast, oh. and we'll wrap up. Yeah, what do you call fun? I may not, but go ahead. What's your best evil villain laugh? <laughs> That's pretty good, right there. And, and and what's scary is you did it naturally. <laughs> uh, all right, and um, I, I'll tell you this. I, I you know you and I don't agree on a lot of things. I think you are sincere in trying to do good things. I'm going to get hit for saying that. I know you will, uh, and I appreciate you taking the point. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I don't know the future of the talk of Santa Clarita, but if we, if we'll have another conversation together or not. But I've certainly enjoyed the ones we've had. Well, so. thank you. I feel the same way. I mean, look at there's some guys I can't talk to for 30 seconds. I I, I can see the hate that they have for me. Yeah. And all I want to do is talk with them. And uh, I've never felt that from you. Like I said, the text. I don't think you're an evil person. I really don't. You have a different way of looking at things. Um, you know, Tip O'Neill used to say stuff like, "It's not that we're different. We just have a. We want the same things. All right. So we want good education. We just mm-hmm. come at it differently. Right. Yeah. But they would find compromising points. Right. Those days are gone. Yeah. If you don't agree with getting education done the same way I do, you're evil and you're nasty and you're wrong. Yeah. That's not going to pull us together. I know. I know. And it scares me. It really does. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I, it should. I, 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 I sometimes, you know, what Louis Gohmert said, there's going to be a second civil war. And I kind of wonder if it's a cold civil war happening right now, you know. So I, I think it is happening now, and I think it's happening on a lot of fronts in yeah. a lot of areas, and it's because we see each other as enemies and not as Americans who have a different point of view. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And oh, my I, God. Say it again. No, I, 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 <laughs> and I'll tell you this. I, honestly, if, although it probably won't happen, if, when the impeachment trial begins, if it actually comes down to that Trump is removed from office, it scares me because the Trump uh, base has the guns. Well, it's so, not just the Trump base. Yeah. But, there was uh, a recent article that came out. There was, there's 420 million registered guns in this country. Yeah. And I always, I don't mean to be flippant about it, but uh, that's the registered ones, all right? Right. So you're talking about a half a million guns registered in this right. country. Right. If those right wing whacktoids were as bad as everybody said they were, they'd already be mowing down people all over the place. They're not doing it. There's a lot of gun loving Americans that don't sure do any violence is. with their guns. Sure, there is. And, and I, but, I, but the president hasn't been. Uh, but I, but I think yet. no. But I, but here's the problem. It, the problem is, is that the left paints anybody for. I, I, and you got to admit, whenever it's a gun conversation, mm-hmm. what do people need guns for? They're wrong. Why? Why? Why do you have to go at it like that? If you're living in the middle of Tuleyville and you've got. Beers and totally. deers and everything else walking through your property. You may need a gun. Uh, no, I, I don't. I, I, I agree with you on that. My cousin lives in Alaska. He goes to the outhouse uh, with a course, shotgun. But, but okay, <laughs> all well, right, and toilet paper. Your cousin oh. should move. <laughs> um, so. But but you know, but there is the argument of why does somebody need an AR-15 to defend their home? Well, I, I I hear what you're saying. I understand what the mindset is. I think the fear is like everything else on the right, which is we open up a crack, we allow one little thing, and all of a sudden we lose but they, 80% but of it, they, and it does happen that but way. But they've banned uh, machine guns. They've banned nuclear weapons. They've banned different things already that they said. Well, I don't know. Would you really want me with a nuclear weapon? Are you serious? Would you want me with a nuclear <laughs> weapon, for that matter? You would probably be better off with one. No, but uh, uh, No, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. But, it's, but again, we go to the big stuff. How about we start small, right? We start small with how to take care of... Uh, uh, it's, education's a great, I think, personally, right. I think it's a great place to start because it's kids, mm-hmm. it's education. How do we get on the same page there? Yeah. How do we make sure every kid has an equal opportunity to yeah. learn? Um, and, and if we can get past that, the other stuff we can grow on. We, you brought up gun, gun control. For, and I, so I just got <laughs> to ask you this, and then we're going to wrap up. But okay. I, I got to ask you this. Do you support red flag laws? No. No, you do not. No. Why do, why do conservatives in general support red flag laws? I think I think the fear is like everything else. Okay, who's going to determine? But why, but most like Lindsey Graham has come out in support of red flag laws, right? Well, because it's 
because it's an easy and it sounds like an easy and quick fix, if you would, right? right? But my question, it'd be like anything else. My question to you is, like a parole panel, right? What do they have? Like two or three people, uh, three yeah, people on sure, a parole, right? Sure. Who decides in the red flag law mm-hmm. how long your guns get taken away from you? Well, I, what's the, what is what is it? Uh, if you're a Vietnam vet, right. I mean, somebody did a, a numbers and said, look, eighty percent of the Vietnam vets would not be allowed to have guns. Well, why? Right. I, I want more. I want more than just a red flag law. Tell me what what the guidelines are. Right. What are you going to use? See, I just. The, the point I was trying to make, though, is, you know, the, the right is always afraid of the fact that the government's going to take your guns, you know. But look red, at Virgin- flag, look red at flag Virginia. Law, well, I know, but red flag laws in general is the basic concept of the government being allowed to take your guns, <laughs> you know. So, oh, no, no, I get your point. But yeah. remember, there's a, we're not all on the same page. Right, right, right. I, I, okay. I, I give them credit all the time. I mean, you guys do well. You, with, the, with the exception or the uh, introduction of AOC and, mm-hmm. and Tlaib and the others, I mean, you guys walk at the legislative level, especially, you walk lockstep with each other. When Pelosi goes down the aisle and she's you know walking down here and here's what we're going to do, everybody's right behind her with it. Right. We don't do that. Uh, we're always really? arguing. Look at Rand Paul. Look at what just went down with the, all the Iranian stuff. And you had a bunch of Republicans that t- said to the president, well, what's what you're doing is wrong. All right, don't do that. You just got on me for deflecting. I'm talking about when you with every issue there is, pretty much, we are not 100% on the same page. Now, you got on the Democrat side... Up until recently, you guys were always on the same page. Mm. Always. Go look at the voting I, records on I, some I, of these big issues. <laughs> you were always on the same. I always gave Pelosi credit for that. I always said, look, at, she knows how to rally the troops. She does. She knows, she kn- she's Italian. She knows how to put the <laughs> squeeze on them and say, you know what? Yeah. This is how this is going to go down. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it did. It, I mean, bad or good, that's the way it went down. Joe, I've enjoyed our conversations. <laughs> They're always fun. Yes. I, don't, I don't know if anything ever gets accomplished. Do you drink do. a lot after them? I want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Just, uh, just rat poison, man. Just Ooh, rat poison. Wow. Just, you know. uh, no, listen, I, I appreciate you coming on the yeah. show again. Uh, it was fun, and uh, nothing got accomplished. Yeah, well, I, I enjoy it. I wish you good luck, and, uh, and um, I, you know, I know what you're going to take for doing it, so enjoy. Yeah. You yeah. might as well, right? Amen. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, man. Hope you enjoyed the talk. You've been listening to the Talk of Santa Clarita. Listen to us on iTunes, SoundCloud.com, YouTube, and Stitcher. Barring a life event getting in the way, a new podcast is available every Tuesday. Questions, comments, and show ideas can be sent to the Talk of Santa Clarita at gmail.com. You can also call or text us at 661 505 8672. That's 661-505-8672. Follow us on Twitter at The Talk of SC or on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Talk of Santa Clarita. You can also visit our website by going to www.thetalkofsantaclarita.com. This has been a production of Radio Free Santa Clarita Incorporated a 501c3 nonprofit organization. To donate, go to radiofreesantaclarita.org slash donate. Radio Free Santa Clarita, on the net and on the air, and we're very much aware. Any questions?